Hello guys, so welcome to the new video and this car over here is the Skoda Octavia Sportline as you can see it looks kind of sporty and this is the top of the range model with a 2 liter petrol engine producing 190 horsepower and this car in this spec costs just over 40,000 euros so yeah, let's test it now I'm going to go for a little bit of a drive uh, and uh, I'll find out the fuel consumption of this car when driving normally or dynamically. So let's start the test. Okay, so we're coming to our final destination and it is raining. Okay guys, so we arrived and the most powerful engine consumed on the motorway 5.9 liters. So that is a really great fuel consumption for such a performance you're getting. And I have to say the Octavia has been a really comfortable cruiser for the trip. So that's a good thing about it. All right, guys, so we're now on a mountain pass and this is the Skoda Octavia Sportline. Look at the way it shines now in the sunshine. Beautiful. So let's have a quick walk around around this car. So we have electrically opening door to the boot, which is enormous as it's a Skoda, as you can see. So pretty nice. It's also very practical, of course. We have uh, what are these? I believe 19 inch wheels. No, these are 18 inch wheels. Uh, 225 45R18. We have Pirelli winter tires. Um, yeah, in the back, let me just put this backpack away. There is usually plenty of room, but these portices are actually quite big. So now it's not as good uh, to sit there as in the normal Octavia. And we also have the cup holders here and we have uh, the vents and no charging for mobile devices. That's surprising, I didn't expect that. So yeah, it's a nice space inside. And uh, yeah, let's have a look here. Here is the interior and here are the sport seats. Here are the sport seats and what I like about the sport seats, these particular ones is they are cloth instead of leather because leather is hell in winter or in summer so cloth is really nice when you put the heating on they are really fast really quickly hit it and yeah uh, in terms of quality i think the dash is pretty good i mean there is just some rattling of plastic but what i don't like is the door trim because it looks like it looks like really cheap plastic like from a normal basic skoda fabia also this it doesn't it doesn't have any shine it looks pretty cheap looks pretty cheap to me uh, this door trim yeah but we have some nice door seals saying you that you have an Octavia you have a sport line badge on the steering wheel so all things considered it's pretty nice you really have to say and let's have a look from the front on the car so the sportiness uh, is showed by this sort of splitter as you can see this sort of splitter on the front and you also have the air curtain to have the better airflow yeah so let's let's now see how this 190 horsepower four-wheel drive octavia drives on a mountain road let's do it okay guys let's hit it so let's send the, let's put the car into sports mode so we have everything in sport let's we turn the traction control off even though we can put it in ESE sport it gives us a little bit of adjustability maybe but let's let's probably leave it turned off so we have everything in sport yeah let's hit it this is a 4x4 Octavia 
So let's see what it does. Ah, so there is no manual mode as you can see, but I can I can turn the paddles on with just using them. Uh, I mean, it, that's not really a nice thing, but anyway. Okay, so the responsiveness of the gear shift paddles could be could be faster. There could be also a little bit of a better click in them. But the engine, wow, the 2.0 pulls very nicely. There is a lot of, <clears throat> there is a lot of... Oh, the front suspension when accelerating really, you know, dives uh, on the brakes. Uh, and on accelerating it, it, it goes up. So that, that's, uh, that's, a not, that's not a good characteristic when you want to drive fast, dynamically. You need a car that's reassuring. And this is like a boat, you know, and that's not a, that's really not a good thing. But the engine, wow, the engine in this thing, the engine in this thing is pretty nice. It's pushing nice. I mean, it's the same engine you got in the, you have in plenty of VW Sport models, that's for sure. Of course, now here is detuned, maybe has a smaller turbo, I think. Uh, yeah, but all, all right, I mean, it really pulls nicely. I mean, I would definitely choose it over the diesel, which is not what many people do here in my country, but it's really great. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. So the responsiveness of the engine, it's perfect. What is this? Front assist isn't available. I don't know why, but okay, we don't need it here. There is no traffic. Okay, the brakes, uh, I can imagine the brakes pedal, brake pedal being a little bit more stiff. Uh, this is quite a one on the softer side, but I mean, it's usable. I mean, you can, you can precisely put the brakes down working. So that's pretty good. The steering, I have to say, is really nice. I'm quite enjoying the steering. Oh. Okay, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Wow. So it seems even though I have the ASR system turned off, I bet it was probably the, just the ABS working, okay. Because of course we have still a little bit of a changeable conditions in some places. It's quite damp somewhere. Okay, here's the bumpy road. Uh, yeah, but uh, I have to say, even though this is supposed to be a sport suspension, oh, it was a big bump. It, it really, there is not, mu not much sportiness in it, I have to say. It's more a comfortable suspension. On a normal road, it's pretty, it's pretty soft and pretty compliant. Uh, which is not what you want when you want to drive like this. Yeah, but the, the agility, even though it's it's a little bit soft, this car, the agility is not it's not too bad, I have to say. Oh, and here we have the traffic. So I think that's the end of that. Okay, so let's review it a little bit. Steering, pretty nice. I also have heated steering wheel, which is handy now. Um, yeah, the chassis, the suspension, I would say, is 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 uh, the biggest letdown of this car in terms of sportiness, because you know this is called sport line, so you someone might expect this being uh, you know a sporty car, or of course you have the RS model, but this is a cheaper, you know something like that, uh, and it's not, it's a comfortable car, <laughs> so yeah, and um, if you want a little bit of a sportiness. A sporty suspension you should definitely choose the adaptive suspension system which is really nicely stiff in sports mode yeah but uh, all around the best thing about this car is the engine much better than the diesel very smooth very powerful through all the rev range you also hear uh, the turbo spooling very it's a very nice sound it's not it's not a it's not a it's not the noisiest sound of turbo spooling, but it's it's nice just to hear it. So yeah, it's quite it's quite okay, and you have all the practicality that you want from a Skoda, and you expect from the from the brand. Yeah, 
and then from the user perspective on everyday basis when I turn it in normal mode it's pretty okay I mean there is this the suspension as I said is comfortable uh, but also it's behaving uh, its behavior on the bumpy road is not the greatest in terms of comfortability I mean it, it's really it's really flowing like a boat but then the front suspension seems to be very nose heavy so uh, the nose of the car keeps crashing into the bumps like that and um, when it crashes and there is a bump or a hole in the bump then the wheels just shot up shot up uh, you know on the way up and uh, you have this like you have this boom into the suspension towers you know so so the the wheels are probably you know you, you could say when you hear that the wheels are too big for the suspension but really the fact is that the suspension is not balanced in the best way so yeah there is this comfortability and uh, and when you're driving for example on the motorways and you have these uh, uh, these connections on the roads on bridges something like that so when you drive over that the car just does this uh, as it's um, as it's ending the bumping so it does like three bumps and then it's flat but but it should not even do these three three like bumps as it's stopping it should just do like one and that's it so and this really shows that the car is quite floaty and when it when you would drive it I don't know very fast it just is unsettling the car with the with its weight on the front axle which gives you a lot more understeer so yeah in terms of suspension I can't really praise this car I mean now on the road when I was driving uh, there was understeer but there was also the rear was uh, rotating a little bit so that that was maybe okay but if you're really an aggressive driver or sporty driver and you like to enjoy the driving I believe you should choose a different car not the Octavia Octavia is a great it's a great all-rounder I mean it's practical many people in my country they love it as in uh, UK they love Ford and in Italy they love Fiat so they love it because we have Skoda it's our heritage and history uh, it's practical we have huge boot which is good for mothers and fathers so they can put whatever in there I don't know what they put in there and uh, someone would say it's still for a reasonable money I don't I don't think I think 41,000 euros is quite a lot for a Skoda but people have different opinions on this but the one thing I really have to praise in terms of everyday usage is the gearbox it really is working flawlessly it's, it's working like if I like I would when I have a manual gearbox so it's putting uh, it's putting uh, the car into neutral when coming to the traffic uh, lights stop or going down the hill so yeah, really have nothing to tell wrong in the about the automatic mode of this gearbox. It's flawless. It's really nice to it's really nice, you know, not to like to use, but it's really nice to have and be driven. And it gives you a really great fuel consumption as well. It's using the power of the engine enough enough well and thanks to the fact that it ha this this engine really has has power, has strength. It can change gears on one and a half thousand rpm so it doesn't rev it up so high which many people don't like they think that the gearbox is you know strangling the engine but really it's not the case when you have power you really don't need to rev the engine high up to in between the gears so yeah so as you can see now I'm coming into the village in neutral and now it changed down so it also downshifts to like if it knew that I'm coming into the into the village so that I would slow down 
it's really, I mean, <laughs> its behavior is really like predictive sometimes. I don't know if it's working in cooperation maybe with maps or something like that. Uh, yeah, but I really like how the DSG gearbox works in this car. One thing that got a lot better, though, is the infotainment. I remember when I was testing this car first, when it was really brand spanking new, the infotainment system was hideous. It was lagging, freezing, it was unusable. But now, it's really quite responsive. So far, I didn't have any hiccup. So I'm glad that they solved it. Still, the climate controls in the display is not the, the ideal solution. But anyway. Then you have the shortcut buttons. So here you set up. You can you set up the these functions like the you can turn off the start and stop which is what I hate and I also turn off after each start of the car the lane assist so yeah and then in the modes you choose the modes you have as usual four modes to choose from but one thing I have to say though this interior is a little bit of a you know mm, mixed quality I would say because there is this very nice dash very nice interior it's looking nice, but then you touch these buttons and you feel like you're pressing the buttons in the Deci Sandero. And also the door trim, as I told earlier, it's like you're from a basic Fabia, Skoda Fabia. So, yeah, and then to have some luxury, you have two-tone ambient lighting. So it's really a mix, mix, sort of a mixed interior, I have to say. Let's clean the windshield a little bit. So yeah, certainly if you're looking for a practical car, the Octavia is just good enough for you. But if you're buying the Sportline version in, uh, with the intention of sportiness, of driving sporty re really quickly on the roads, enjoying the driving, you should probably choose the RS model or a different car because the suspension or the sport suspension, or you should choose, or alternatively, you should choose the DCC uh, adaptive chassis. Because this sport suspension that's in this car really is not great for this sort of uh, driving. guys so just a few last words to the Octavia it's a really great all around of this car you have enough space in the back you have a huge boot and with this 2.0 EA888 engine you really have enough power and it's a petrol engine so it's creamy smooth the DSG gearbox works flawlessly this engine has really a lot of power so if you're looking for a family car take this but if you have intention of driving sporty with it, also in the corners, I, my advice is you better take the DCC adapt, adaptive suspension or you, or you take a completely different car because this supposedly sport suspension is really not very good. It's quite soft and it's trying to be very comfortable. So yeah, that's, that's my view of this car and I'll see you guys in the very next video. Goodbye.